Iron Supporting Food Banks collects food and cash donations for needy families in Newham Borough and beyond. Please consider making a donation via their Just Giving page, the link for which you will find in the description section of this stream. Come on you irons! Welcome back to the West Ham Massive, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining me. I need your help with this one. I want as many of you guys that are watching as possible that once you've finished, drop a comment in the section below. I want to know what you guys think about what I'm about to discuss. Please also don't forget, as well as commenting on this stream, don't forget to drop a like on the stream. That helps get this content out to places it might other not otherwise get. Don't forget to share it to your social media platforms as well. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already and make sure you hit the bell icon for alerts and new content. All these things are free to do. They take seconds. No effort on your part, really. And it helps the channel tremendously. So thank you very much indeed for your support in this matter. OK, so we're in the midst of a transfer bonanza. We're, we're buying players left, right and centre. We're buying any player with a pair of legs, quite frankly. We've signed seven players. And as I recalled this, we're still trying to get the Aaron Wambisaka deal over the line. And I'm hearing rumours that that might not be the end of the business. There might be one, possibly two more players that come into the club. And this is all very well and good. And I'm not going to complain about getting business done. As the time I write this, in terms of the expenditure that the club has had, Players coming in, this is from Transfer Market, is my resource. According to Transfer Market, of the players that we've brought into the club in this summer transfer window, we have spent 126.8 million euros. That converts into pound sterling at the current exchange rate at 108.4 million pounds approximately. As far as the players out are concerned, you have to take that into consideration as well. We've managed to recoup back 44.75 million euros, according to Transfer Market. Again, at the current exchange rate, that works out to 38.26 million pounds. So the net spend, if we just keep it simple, the net spend in pounds sterling is 70.1 million pounds approximately. This is this is really good, and I, you know I'm, I'm not going to complain it at all. I'm really not. However, there is something that I do have to ask the question. I do wonder whether we are 12 months behind where we ought to be. Cast your mind back, approximately 12 months. We're in the aftermath of winning the Europa Conference League, our first trophy in 43 years. We had a manager who. I think at the time was was quite unpopular despite his success in that competition. And he, as I say, he has one one year left on his deal. They're umming and ahhing about whether they're going to keep him on. He's umming and ahhing about whether he wants to stay. Now, for me, in, at that moment in time, I think one of two things needed to happen. We either needed to pay up his contract and, and say, thank you very much for what you've done, Mr. Moyes. But but can you please sort of go now? Or we needed to extend his deal right there and then. And if he didn't want to do the latter, then again, we come back to option A. Pay his, pay his contract up, send him on his way. Now, also around this time, a certain Julien Lopetegui was having a few little ructions at Wolverhampton Wanderers, which ended up shortly before the season began resulting in him walking away from the club because he felt there were certain assurances, certain promises that he was given. And obviously, when they didn't come to pass, he felt that he couldn't put up with that. Uh, and off he went. And I think that was an opportunity for the club to actually sort of like say, no, hold on, this is the guy that maybe we want to get in 
and get as a replacement for Moyes. Now, we didn't do that. Now, I kind of understand it. I kind of get it. Obviously, when Lopetegui left Wolverhampton Wanderers, the season was just about to start. So, OK, I might be able to give the hierarchy and specifically David Sullivan I'm talking about. Because at the end of the day, he is the majority shareholder. He is the person that really makes the decisions at the club. So I, I might be able to give him a little bit of mitigation for maybe not getting his, the job done as far as that's concerned in the summer last year. However, then we get to the January transfer window. And you have this weird situation where, and I remember we beat Arsenal and it was just after Boxing Day. I think it was the 28th, if I remember correctly, 28th of December. I was actually fortunate enough to be there. And a fantastic result, although i got to be completely truthful, hand on heart. We didn't play particularly well. We didn't have too much of the ball. It was a typical Moyes performance. But at the end of the day, we went to a team that would go on to finish second in the Premier League. And I believe at that point, they were actually leading the Premier League title race at that point. And we actually went there and beat them 2-0. Now, there was noises then that we'd actually offered him a, a contract extension. And Moyes was dragging his fee. He wasn't too sure. Did he want to stay? Did he want to go? He wasn't too sure. Now, that indecision, I believe, cost us. Because I honestly think that, OK, if we didn't do it in the summer of 2023, then that was that was surely an opportunity. That was surely the moment that David Sullivan should have turned around and said, no, hang on a minute, David, we're, we're going to give you a two-year contract. But if you don't want to sign it, give us some clarity. Give us some, some understanding of where you're at. All this maybe I'll sign, maybe I won't is not really acceptable. Now, any leader, any person worth their salt, and David Sullivan is a, is a very shrewd businessman, would have made the move at that point. And let's remember that Julien Lopetegui, at this point in time, was without a club. He was completely a free agent. We could have brought our current manager in at that point, having paid up the remainder of David Moyes' contract, which would have last been, what, another six months or something like that? Paid up his contract, sent him on his way, and got the current manager in harness a good, what, seven, eight months early? He could have then come in, got a bit of transfer business done. Maybe, maybe, maybe we might have been able to do one of two things or possibly both of them. One, we might have finished higher than the ninth place in the Premier League that we, that we eventually went on to finish. And let's be honest, the latter part of the season just finished, it did peter out a little bit. So I, I think that it's, there's a fair chance that the, the current manager could have done better than David Moyes in that regard, had he been given the opportunity. Or, and we might have even sort of gone further in the Europa League than what we did. And let's be honest about it. We weren't that far away from possibly causing a bit of an upset against Bayer Leverkusen. What did we get to the 83rd minute? Locked at nil-nil in the away leg, the first leg. And then we conceded two late goals. And even in the second leg, we were one nil up. Another goal at that point, And we're then heading into extra time. Now, we all remember the game against Seville when it was locked at extra time. We had to have extra time to separate us. And obviously, we had that goal from Andre Yarmolenko. We remember the atmosphere. We remember the progression from that point on in that competition. Who's to say that if we'd have not had Julian Lopetegui in at that point, which I believe we would and should have done, if we'd have had someone at the top of the club that have actually had a set of balls, that have actually been able to make a decisive call when David Moyes was mucking around, dragging his heels, do I want to sign, do I... Sorry... At that point, he should have pulled the trigger. At that point, he should have pulled the trigger. I realise that he might have been thinking that it might have been an unpopular move because obviously this was a guy that had won us our first trophy in 43 years. But let's be completely honest, David. Read the room. Read the room. David Moyes was was done. He was he was very unpopular with the rank and file. There were certain elements of of the the support was okay with him, but I think they were, as time went on, 
they were getting less and less. David Sullivan should have acted earlier. He didn't. And as a result of that, I believe that we didn't get European football that we possibly would have done had we got Lepetegui in at least in the January and possibly the season before. Possibly we could have gotten a few of these transfer moves that we've done this season. We could have possibly done some of them last season. We would be 12 months ahead of where we are now. That is on David Sullivan's head as far as I'm concerned. It's all very well now. He's spending money like it's going out of fashion. He's doing business. He's allowed Tim Stiton a, a sort of free reign. But again, that's another thing that, again, I blame David Sullivan for because he brought Tim Stiton in with David Moyes in post. David Moyes was an old school British manager, not a continental coach such as Julian Lepetegui, who works in tandem with a sporting director such as Tim Stiton. Bringing Tim Stiton in with David Moyes in harness, it was never going to work. And it didn't. It simply didn't. So I believe all of these things make me believe that David Sullivan had just no clue about how to how to properly act in that situation. For me, he was incompetent. I think he was absolutely incompetent. And I think this, again, displays traits that... You know, is he a, is he really a fit and proper person to be the majority shareholder at West Ham United? Yes, he's doing well now, but as I say, I think that any leader, any proper businessman, would have been able to work things out and get things moving a lot more decisively, a lot quicker than we have found on this occasion. But I could be wrong. I'm not saying I'm right. I could be wrong. This is where you come in. You've got a comment section below. Get stuck into it. Let me know what you think. Do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong? And either way, give me your reasoning behind your end answer to that question. Thank you very much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. Please don't forget to like, comment on and share this stream to your social media platforms. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. And make sure you hit the bell icon for alerts on new content. All these things take moments to do. All these things are completely free of charge to you and they help the channel out tremendously. And we all thank you very much indeed for your support in this particular matter. I'm going to disappear now. Look after yourselves. Stay safe. Come on, you Irons. Irons Supporting Food Banks collects food and cash donations for needy families in Newham Borough and beyond. Please consider making a donation via their Just Giving page, the link for which you will find in the description section of this stream. Come on you irons!